Hello and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Today I've decided to do some macro photography. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and your channel as well if you're watching. I hope everyone's safe and well at the moment. Today I thought I'd do some macro photography. You haven't done uh, macro for quite some time but uh, I think last time I did it I was using an F90X Nikon with a macro lens but this time I've decided to use my chin on 35mm camera with a couple of extension tubes and a 50mm lens. Nice and cheap and cheerful stuff and I'm going to be taking photographs this area here and in my room we've got this nice big window area it's projecting some nice soft light over towards the area I'm working in the sun is over there so the light's not going to be hard and uh, wait get back in the dark room get back and uh that's my brother sorry so the light coming through is nice and soft on this area where I'm going to be focusing on so I'm not really going to be changing anything at all other than the objects that I'm going to be taking photographs of and a few funky backgrounds as well to try out I'm not talking about those little twinkle lights and tacky stuff like that just some nice solid backgrounds that would uh, complement some complement some of the stuff that I'm going to be shooting a lot of it's going to be the camera gear that I've got um I need to fill this room up with some with some new photographs so I thought you know what 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 better stuff to to shoot than uh I like which is photography so um I'll just give you a little uh, demonstration of what I'm doing and how I'm setting it up. So I've got these two extension tubes here that I picked up um, a long time ago, pretty cheap, second-hand stuff. I've got two and a half uh, extension tube and a three times extension tube as well. They're both on there. I've got the 50 millimeter lens sitting on there as well. That's looking at the subject, and this is about as close as I can get. So how does extension tubes work? I don't know. You just put them on there, and it gets you closer to the subject. That's as far as I know about it. In fact, even the exposure compensation, I can't get my head around the math of that. That's why I'm using a DSLR uh, to do some exposure compensation with and without the um, extension tubes so I can understand a little bit what, what's going to happen when I put a film camera on there. As soon as I put the extension tubes on with this 50mm lens, I'm going to lose exposure. And you notice I've got my camera on a tripod. I'm going to be shooting a 100 speed film, so my shutter speeds are going to start getting a little bit slow, um, especially when I start stopping down my lens, my aperture, to sort of f11s and f16s if i want to get more depth of field on my subject because with the extension tubes if i'm shooting for f4 f2.8 i'm going to get such a shallow depth of field i don't know it might look all right it might not but at least then i've got the tripod if i need to um, shoot slower shutter speeds to compensate for smaller apertures so stick around i'll show you what i'm doing with the dslr to test all this then i'll load the film camera in shoot a uh, shoot a roll of film develop it and then I'll show you guys the scans of the images that I've taken. And then I'm going to get in the dark room and print off some of my best ones. So uh, stick around, should be a good one. So first thing I need to do is just, I'm just going to do some tests with the DSLR. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just using the grey card there, pointed towards the window light. I'm going to take a reading off that grey card, which will give me an average. And the meter has given me a reading of f4.9, so I'll say, what, 5.6 for argument's sake, and 15th of a second. So I'm going to use 5.6, 15th of a second on the DSLR. So I'll just now take my first shot, which I'm expecting it to be underexposed because of the extension tube. So now I need to see how much I need to compensate by. So let's go to one stop. to eighth of a second. And that don't look too bad. Obviously this is completely different to film. I'm just getting a rough idea. And that's two stops overcompensated. So hopefully you can see on the screen, that's a uh, 15th of a second what the meter read. That's eighth of a second, so that's one stop overexposed. And that's two stops overexposed. So I'm looking into the shadow areas, not the highlights, because some of my subjects won't have chrome and stuff on them. So I'm going to play it safe and just go with two stops overexposed. I'd rather have an overexposed image than an underexposed image on the negative. So now I've got my metered exposure. I've got my compensation that I want to use the two stops over exposed. And all I need now is some subjects and a few little funky backgrounds. Load the film camera and start shooting film.
So I ended up only doing about 20 or so shots. I cut the film out of the camera and developed it in Extar one part to one part and I did it for seven minutes. I went on to the film I was using was a Potsdam 100 uh, Lomography film, which I believe is Orwo. But I went on the, uh, on the website or on the internet and had a look at the development times. It says seven and a half minutes, but I dumped it in there for seven minutes. Um, I didn't want to over overburn these uh, or over overcook these uh, negatives but uh, there's the negs there I'll show you these on the light box they've come out all right so all I need to do now is make some prints I've already seen which ones I want to make photographs of I'm gonna go for free but uh, I'll show you me making one and then I'll show you the other two after I've done it I'm expecting to, to, to be using a little bit of contrast filters to try and keep things uh, in tow a little tiny bit that's the camera I was using the chin on CS camera I enjoy using this camera a lot you've seen it featured on my on my uh, channel quite a bit and they're the extension tubes there I just couldn't get my head around um, the calculation that I needed for the exposure one or two stops but there must be some cheat sheet or something if anyone knows let us know in the comments for me and other people to see as well because it would be handy but I got around it with the DSLR you know easy stuff and uh, converted it around to film got the negatives they look great and the one thing I do know is how to make a decent print so let's get on and make a wet print in the darkroom so I'm about to start my printing session and for new subscribers and you guys that are new to darkroom printing I'll go through what I'm doing uh, at the moment. So the negative is already inside the carrier on this enlarger and I've set the enlarger quite high up and the reason being is because I'm going to be enlarging quite big. This is a square template that I'm using. Um, I want these 35mm negs to print as square. It's, I like that format. I'm not really fussed if, uh, if I'm not using the whole... Um, uh, the whole frame of the 35 mil I'm cropping it to how I want to crop it and how I want it to look in the print so um, that's my template there square template that is 10 by 10 inches so it's quite large that's why the enlarger is quite up high and uh, these are my contrast filters I'm going to be using these during this um, process just so I can control the contrast and I start off as always with a two and a half grade filter and that goes underneath my lens there uh, this is the paper I'm using. This is 16 by 12 uh, Kentmere paper and thanks to you guys that support me on Patreon um, I've got this recently, so I'm gonna be using this paper this evening in here and That's a, um, uh, a resin coated multi-grade uh, They call it VC select Lustra paper. So it's quite it's my favorite paper So that's what I'm gonna be using all my chemicals are over that side develop stop and fix ready to go I'm gonna do some test strips first of all. I'll show you the negative projected on the baseboard here so you can see that's the full that's the full uh, width of my photograph that i took this is the cable release that i put on top of that photographic book uh, none of the writing makes any sense it just says a couple of words about dates and new york i first thought it looked pretty cool actually so i'm just going to close my carrier down just to hide the excess areas like so and the other side there you go and this is the area I'm going to be printing inside. So I've literally shifted my template around uh, to where I want it to be. And now all I need to do is do some test prints to see my exposure times. I'm anticipating them to be quite long because of the height of the enlarger. And the, and the aperture at the moment is set at 2.8. I'm not going to want to print that bright. I'm probably going to bring it down to around about F11. Around about there. Just gives me a little longer time to work on the print. When the light's on but you can't see it now obviously because i'll close the uh, aperture down but there it is back at 2.8 close it back down to 11. so let's get a piece of paper out this is my test strip here find out where to put it i need to turn this red light off so i can see what i'm doing for a sec okay so i'm going to put it across the pen uh, the pen the um <laughs> it's because it looks like a pen Pull it across the um, cable release there, and I'll start my test prints. Just get a piece of card. And I'm gonna do uh, three second increments all the way across. You can't see the head of the enlarger in the camera view there, but trust me, it's up there. Right, three seconds. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. 
So we'll put this in the developer, and I've not got a clue if these times are going to be okay. That's why we're doing these tests. Okay, you can just see the image starting to come through now. Okay, it's nearly done. So I'm gonna stop and fix, and I'll put it on my board for you guys to see. So this is my test print here of increments of three seconds. So I've got three, six, nine, 12, and 15. And there's two parts to the image that I need to try and capture is, I wanna try and get the, the print on the paper kind of black, I don't want it looking muddy, but I also want the paper to not be pure white, but I want it to not be gray. Um, and also the release cable. I need to make sure that's got a little bit of contrast as well. So looking at 15 seconds, I'm just gonna do another test print at 15 seconds. Uh, don't forget this is the two and a half grade filter that I've put under here. This is multi-grade paper. I'm working with two and a half grade filter. So I've got quite a bit to play with on the filter side of things. So let's do a print, a test print at 15 seconds and see what we get. So you can see I've put a, a large piece of test paper under there, I'm gonna hit that now for 15 seconds, and that'll be my second test to watch. And it's going right across the nib. I've got the paper, and obviously the, the ink as well on the book. So from this, I should know where to go next. And that's that done. All right, let's develop that, same again. I'm just gently rocking the developer back and forward, covering all the paper. That's not looking too bad, actually. But I can only tell when the lights are on. So there's two strips I've done here. This was 15 seconds, like we said, two and a half grade filter. But it was just too gray on the book. And I can see that the writing is just, it's just muddy, you know? Um, I, like, I like this part of it here, on the, uh, the top of the release cable. But the paper is just too muddy, so it's not gonna work for me. So I decided to go for a split grain. And what I did was just half this time. So I did seven and a half seconds with a contrast zero filter and seven and a half seconds with a contrast five filter, doing a basic split grade on it just to see where I stand. And it's worked. It's, um, it's got the, the detail back in the paper. It's not so muddy. Um, I've got my blacks going on, but I'd just like to have seen this area a little bit darker, maybe the nib as well. And if you're not too familiar of how the filters work, just think about Lightroom, uh, if you use Lightroom. Think of the black um, slider and the highlight slider. If you play around with them, the black will kind of like be your, your grade fours and your fives, and the highlight slider will similarly be sort of zeros and ones. So in this situation here, um, if I wanna increase my blacks, I'm gonna use a contrast five uh, for a little bit longer than seven and a half seconds. So I'm probably gonna keep the seven and a half seconds on contrast zero, because that's built the whites up where I want them to be. Uh, the paper etc but the uh, contrast five seven and a half wasn't enough i just want to try and see if i can build this up a bit more the only worry is is that i might start attacking this area that's already started to uh, to turn darker the the white paper so let's have a go anyway i'm going to put it on for 10 seconds and see what happens so i put my contrast zero filter back in i could leave the five in and do it the other way around but i'll start off as i mean to go on i need some more paper well, the thing about darkroom work, you will go through paper using uh, test strips. Sometimes you get lucky. Right, um, okay, so contrast zero, we said seven and a half seconds. Off she goes. And the contrast five, I'm just gonna let that work on the, on the darker parts of the print for a little bit longer than seven and a half. So I'll now put contrast five's filter in which is a high contrast filter. And I'm gonna let that go for just a little bit longer. I'll go for 11 seconds. And we'll see where it goes from there. And there we go, that's the third test print I've done. So that was seven and a half seconds with contrast zero. And I did 11 seconds with contrast at five just to boost these areas here. And you can see the contrast five has just started working on the darks compared to this one on here. Uh, got the nib a little tiny bit darker. The paper has only gone a very, very, very slight shade darker than this side. 
Um, but I don't mind that. This is be much better than this. This is too muddy. So the paper's kind of st still standing out and the ink is nice and black as well. So that simple little split grade has really helped me out with this print. Seven and a half, contrast zero, 11 seconds, contrast five. Let's make a print. So before I put a piece of paper under the enlarger and start print and just make sure that I've still got my focus. Otherwise, it'll be a wasted piece of paper. I'll just take the filters out. And I've still got my grain, so that's good. Put the contrast zero filter back in. And when you're doing it, if you're using a focus grain finder like that, make sure that you're using the same piece of paper to put it on as the paper you're gonna print with, because that little tiny millimeter or so, or half a millimeter, whatever it is of thickness, will um, mess around with your, with your focusing. So that's that done, turn the enlarger off. Put my timer to seven and a half seconds. That comes a paper. And I'm just marking on this where my paper needs to sit. goes there Put my weights and just hold my template down so no light seeps underneath you can obviously buy easels professional easels but they're a lot of money and I've used these for years I'm so used to them cutting uh, my own shapes and sizes it works uh, perfectly for what I do in the dark room. Okay, so that's ready to go. I'll use a little tiny bit of card just in case any dust or anything's got on the paper. I'll just waft it before I start printing. That'll get rid of that. And off we go. Zero, contrast zero, seven and a half seconds. As our test strip said. Okay, change the filters over now. Put the contrast five in. Slide that under the lens. And we said 11 seconds on this. If it goes 11 seconds. Done. And the last thing to do is what I like doing when I'm printing this size is just put a border in around the edge of the print which I use this for. So I need to take the filter out, take the negative carrier out, and I just need to burst white light onto, so that's, that's all it needs, just a flash on this side. One at the bottom, and in she goes. I'm not too fussed for any dust or little scratchy bits on this. It's hoping it's going to be a rough looking print with a bit of grain and a bit of grunge to it. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's looking lovely. And I can also pull that. I'm looking at the tones coming through. They're pretty much through now, but if I felt it was going dark and I wanted it, I could pull it and put it into the stop bath and that would stop the paper going any darker. But I don't need to, it's looking good. Into the stop bath. And into the fixer. Just 
let the excess drain off. You notice my fixer tray, I'm just saving room, it's a space saver, I've got it up here. Just got to be careful that you don't drip any of this into your developer. Now the fixer into the wash, time for washing. So I'll give this a thorough wash now. And this, uh, this is clean water and then hang it up to dry. So that was a little bit of fun doing some uh, macro or close-up photography. That's the little tiny camera my mate gave me. <laughs> I ain't got a clue what to do with it. It's, um, I don't know, what is it? A little spy camera or something? Um, I was going to turn it into a key ring, but it actually works. I haven't put any film in it, but I think it works. But uh, anyway, I'll pop that back up there. These are my prints that I came back with. That was that old light meter, Lucy meter. Let me know in the comments if anyone's got a Lucy meter. Um, I've never used it because it doesn't work, but it's a nice little ornamental piece, I suppose. But uh, that's one print there. These are 10 by 10. This is a 16 by 12 paper. That's going to be framed. And that's that little tiny spy camera. I like that one. That was on a brick. That's going to be framed as well. And these will go in square frames. And they'll go on the wall behind me there in my room where I spend most of my time. And that was uh, particularly like that one. The word didn't make any sense. It was just a page that I turned to, but it's got New York and New York and some other bits and bobs on there. That was the cable release shutter that I put on there as well. You know, just little tiny ideas that come into your mind as you're, um, as you're already set up. There's no reason why, why to think too hard. You've got everything set up. The window light's coming through. You're just plonking objects down and taking um, macro or close-up photographs, as I, as I call it. So um, this... <laughs> and if you haven't got any extension tubes, what I've done in the past is use a bog roll, the end of a toilet roll, you know, um, or tissue, toilet tissue, or type paper. <laughs> so I've used these before and got some great results, and I'll just show you some of the DSLR images that I've got using a toilet roll, the end of a toilet roll, as uh, an extension tube. And I've done this in the past. I've used this as an extension tube. I've dumped a 50 mil lens and gaffer taped it and then somehow rigged it to my camera and I've gone out and shoot real close up macro shots. So if you ain't got any extension tubes, you can still shoot, just grab yourself a toilet roll. Anyway, <laughs> so if you haven't got any expensive macro lenses or any extension tubes, just grab a toilet roll. I'm sure someone's got one indoors. Uh, adapt your 50 mil lens to it. Somehow get it rigged up to your DSLR or your film camera and have a go, you might be surprised at the results that you get. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.